All right, Shalom, brothers and sisters. I hope everyone is doing well in these tough and perilous times. All right, so we're going to get right into it. You're going to see something different today. As I told you in the first lesson, there were a few subtopics that were to be determined. And so what I added today was time spent. So if you see the first portion, we did feasted tabernacles. Second was the warning. Third was the lockdown. And so this portion, small little portion, will be called time spent. And I was in prayer. I was like, man, most high, like, how could I, how could I really hit home this blackout lesson? And what came to mind was before the blackout, you need to evaluate how your time is spent. So, and a lot of people may not think that this is important. But brothers and sisters, this this is this is life and death important. Really quickly, hold one moment, please. I am so sorry, brothers and sisters. Thank you for um, your patience through that little pause. I just had realized I for had uh, missed a book, and I wanted to make sure I have. All right. So like I said, we're gonna go right into it, time spent. But I know that you may have, some of you may have watched one of my other lessons, okay? And many are called, few are chosen, called time, is time for you or against you? Now, this is totally different. In some sense, it can go hand in hand, absolutely. But this time, I want to really go into part four, time spent. It's called regret or satisfaction. Okay, Regret or satisfaction. Now we know the end is nigh. But when it's all said and done, will you be satisfied with how you used your time? Or will you regret how you used your time? This one's going to hit a little bit. But I hope it also encourages you, brothers and sisters. Let's get right into it. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2. Verse 12 to 18 reads, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men, for as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Now, you're probably wondering, 
why in the world did I start this off with woes? Because time spent, we know we're at the end. But what does woe mean? Remember I told you I would make a portion on woe about the blackouts? This is woe for time spent. What does the word woe mean? So here you can see it says great sorrow or distress. Now think of it when we're talking about time. Are you going to be in great sorrow and distress because you didn't use your time wisely? I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, we are at we're pretty much at the fourth quarter with about two minutes left in the game. Two minutes left. Why do I say that? There's only really two major prophecies that need to happen. Yes, 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 I know there's more seals. There's more trumps that need to happen, but I'm talking about two major things that are going to occur. One is the mark of the beast in full out persecution. That's one. And two, Christ's return. Okay. Now we understand other things are going to happen. That's true. I'm not saying those things are obsolete. What I'm saying is the biggest things that are coming first is the mark worldwide, the implementation which would be the hour with the beast, which is a season, a time period, and then Christ's return. I want you to understand all the things in the world that have happened for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Think of all the wars, the genocides, the murders, all the bad things that have happened. And if I'm certain if a person from the dead came back, just like Christ said, remember Christ said, hey, you know, the man said to Christ, can I tell my family, right? And Christ said, what? If they don't listen to the prophets that are alive and to the books of Moses and to the other prophets, what make you think they'd listen to you, right? So what does that tell us? That tells us that people that we may know, people from the past, people in history, if they had one wish, they would tell us to use our time serving the most high. This is why fearful hearts, brothers and sisters, faint hands, no, not in this time. You see, think about it this way, right? If someone came and tried to hit you and they said, at first, I'm going to hit you, maybe you wouldn't believe it. But then when they got in the stance and swung and missed, you would say, oh man, this is serious, right? They really have something against me. Now, which one are you when it comes to the hour with the beast? Which one are you with biblical prophecy? Are you the one who needs to get swung on first? Are you the one paying attention, knowing that it's real from the beginning? Which one are you? It says, woe well, be to faint hearted. You know what faint hearted means? Easily depressed. Timid, cowardly, going into fear. 
brothers and sisters, you see, he who is in us is a conqueror of all, of all, right? That's Christ. But understand as far as you and me as a creation of the most high, Satan is not afraid of us. I want you to understand that. It is by Christ alone that we make Satan tremble. Remember that. So Satan has all, had all the time and the evil spirits and some Jaza and Azazel all the way down the line of fallen angels and entities. They had all that time being bound to the bottomless pit to conspire a plan. Think of it like this for my uh, football fans out there, a flea flicker, a Statue of Liberty, causing a distraction and boom, it hits you. Like what? I didn't even see it coming. It's just, don't, be, don't, don't let Satan put you in fear. Yes, the times are, 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 are crazy. Yes, it's easy to be depressed at this moment. A lot of people are gonna go without. You may know a lot of people. You may wanna help a lot of people. I'm gonna also teach you how to use all this knowledge and time and how to use it well spending your time wisely so you can be satisfied with your decision when that blackout comes all right woe unto those who have lost patience luke 21 and 19 says patience possesses a soul which means every action Take is intertwined with patience. All right. Now I wanted to hit on, even though all of this is important, I wanted to touch on verse 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. Now, if you know Christ is coming back, what are you doing to show humility in your soul? If you know the Most High's vengeance is about to burn throughout this world, are you preparing your heart? Are you preparing? Are you preparing? Because when you come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. You don't think Satan's gonna tempt us? The first, the first thing he does when he's the man of the planet, the man of the world, So what do we do with our time? How do we use it? We're gonna get into this. Second Ezra 16 and 77. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. So the first thing you need to understand being in the truth that Satan is an accuser. He's a tempter and he's an accuser. And if he can't tempt you, he will accuse you. You understand what I said? No, you don't understand. You see, he tempted everyone first with vaccinations and said, you'll lose everything. 
and we're still here. The next phase is accusations. And we see this now. All the countries are calling those who refuse things terrorists, domestic terrorists, right? So what I'm going to say to you now, brothers and sisters, going back into the last scripture, don't be faint-hearted, don't be easily depressed, because that is Satan's game. He's going to tell you you're not worthy. He's going to tell you all kinds of nasty things. He's going to bring up everything that you've done, yet it was covered by the blood of Christ. He's going to tell you. And he's going to say, who do you think you are? Who does, who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? I remember you. I know what you've done. You think I won't make it come out? playing on your worst of fears. And then let's not forget a lot of brothers and sisters fall victim to this. What do they say? Call a spade a spade, right? Call it what it is. So when you see someone operate in a certain way, you need to say, get behind me, Satan especially if they're righteous, right? Maybe they slip up and say something that bothers you, right? Isn't that what Christ did with Peter? To get behind me saying, I know this is not Peter talking, right? But what happens when it's not a righteous person? Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you right now, don't ignore the signs. Don't ignore the signs. I don't care if they was your family, your friend, your spouse, your children. Don't ignore the signs because it's all life or death. If they start bringing up your past, you understand that Satan is going to what? Satan is going to bring up your sins. Look what it says. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Now, for some people, this works as a two-sided coin, right? We understand that scripture says good is set against evil. So for the evil, they're going to regret what they've done. And their sins, they'll say, oh, man, you know. Well, maybe they may not. A lot of them won't because Christ said it would be as the times of Noah, right? The times of Lot, were they remorseful? They most definitely would not. So who would be accusing us of our sins? Satan, when you see verse 67, it says, Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him, leave off from your sins and forget your iniquity. So why would the Most High tell you to remember no more your sins? And then tell you your sin shall be your accusers. It's because spirits and Satan will put everything in your mind to tell you that you aren't worthy and ready for this journey. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, before the blackout occurs. Because if you thought the purge was bad, the purge was child's play compared to the Bible. Why? Because the Bible tells us that what? The Bible tells us what? For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon 
everyone? No. Upon Democrats, Republicans, Independents? No. Upon Blacks? No. Upon Whites or Hispanics? No. It says those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen spearing none and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. You see, this is, this is where it goes. The purge, like I said, was child's play. Now I want you to ask yourself, this question and you know how this is correlated to be true a lot of people say oh that's the apocrypha you know how this is true mad men sparing none destroying those that fear the lord do you understand what christ said in matthew 24 what did he say he said one but he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved why would you have to endure? Why would you have to let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house? Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Why would Christ say, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Why would Christ say that? Because they're going to do a full out campaign against every single person that believes in the most high. You know how they, they talk about Hitler and you know the people over there, 1948. <laughs> We're gonna call them the 1948ers. <laughs> you know how Hitler, you know, did all that stuff, right? even though he was one of those individuals. It's going to be like that, but for the entire world. But against every nationality. So why worry about what Satan has to say? Why worry about what non-believers have to say? You know what? I even go... For those of you especially who are babes in the truth, I'm talking three, four years in the truth, because that, that's a that's a babe. I'm sorry. That's a babe. Hey. Ask yourself this. Do you have enough knowledge that when you can't go back inside your house, you know exactly what to do? Oh, shoot. I stumped him there, didn't I? I stumped him there, didn't I? Most people don't. You know why? they looking for a rapture. <laughs> and, and, and all I got to say is John Darby. <laughs> John Darby versus Christ who wins Christ second answer was 13 and I made a typo here so I apologize second answer was 13 and 16 reads for as I conceive in mine understanding woe unto them that shall be left in those days and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. Once again, your uh, rapture doctrine dismantled. Why would the Most High tell Ezra this? Woe unto those that be left, but much more woe to those that are not left behind. says, therefore, are they come into great perils and many necessities. Brothers and sisters, when Klaus Schwab says, 
you will own nothing and be happy? The Bible said it first. They will come into great perils and many necessities, meaning we will go without every single need, without water, without food, without shelter. We would go through that. Everyone. I don't care how much you stocked up. It reads, it is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days. He answered unto me and said, do you see that? It means we're all going to face some danger. It's more likely that we face danger than pass away as a cloud out of the world, which means seeing clouds evaporate. Now you tell me how much danger that is. Skipping around verse 23 reads, he that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. How do you keep yourself? They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. Faith with works, right? You say, oh, I have faith. I say, let me show you my faith by my works. Know this, therefore, they that which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. Can someone read this to a Christian? They that be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. I'm, I, I'm trying to help the people. I'm trying to help. No one's listening. Hosea 4 and 6. So why would people be dead? Here's the kicker. Simple as one, two, three. Hosea 4 and 6. My people. Now, once again, I, know, I understand this applied for Israel, but this is going to apply for everyone. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So think of it this way. People will be destroyed for the lack of knowledge. What knowledge? Not knowing the Most High, not accepting Christ as their Savior, and not repenting and changing from their ways. So the Most High said, well, I'm going to reject you. Simple. Second Ezra. 15. Verse 14. Says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So this is going to happen everywhere. And I'm jumping to verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments saith the Lord. And you know, as easy as this sounds, this is really difficult for a lot of people to not sin, to keep the commandments. It's really difficult. But yet, if that crosswalk say, don't cross, you follow that, You'll put a seatbelt on in a car. You'll stop at a stop sign. You'll stop at a stoplight. You'll pay your taxes. You'll pay your bills. Right? Come on. You follow laws all the time. It's a matter of choice. Amos. Chapter 8. Reads, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, 
not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. And that was this generation. When the generation, the youngest generations find out and no one's talking about it no more, and it really hit the fan. No more TikTok. <laughs> no more dancing and, you know, lewd, you know, side talk shows and stuff. And they're going to they're gonna be hungry. And the most high, hey, I'm telling you, if I was a, if I was, a person of this generation coming up like those like give or take like 22 23 and younger i would repent every day i've always believed that if the most high ended the world in a certain generation then that generation is the worst ever <laughs> there ain't no way we're around it. Now, yes, you may have elderly and older people following, but let's call it for what it is. It's despicable. This younger generation accepts Satan as if he's a piece of candy. And with no question, they'll tell you a hundred and one reasons why they don't believe in God, but won't even give you one reason as to fighting against Satan. It's because they embrace him. But they're going to they gonna fear. They're going to be the ones to hurt the most. So the time is coming, brothers and sisters. We know that famine is already here. We know that the thirst of water, wormwood, is coming. Some place it's already occurring. But the famine of the words of the Most High, of the Lord. Now, when that blackout comes, What will you have? Now, if you think, and now for for those who are in my little congregation with me in person, I've told them, hey, write a little book or something, like a little notebook, maybe scriptures that will help you, right? But even that, brothers and sisters, will not even suffice. Why? I'm going to show you why. Because if you can't come out of your, if you can't come off the rooftop of your home, if they're going to spoil all people who fear the most high, they're going to, they're not going to stop night and day. They're not going to stop night and day. Mind you, this is, this is not, you know, the Will Smith mu movie, Enemy of State. This is Enemy of the World. Everywhere we go, we will be enemies, fugitives. Everywhere we go, they will claim people who believe in Christ, terrorists. It's coming. But that famine of the word, do you have enough knowledge when the lights go out? For good. Do you have enough knowledge to sustain the times? Now, forgive me, here is another typo. I put second Baruch. I mean, third. It's actually second. So, 
you may say, why am I saying these things? Now, second Baruch, if you didn't know who Baruch is, Baruch is the assistant to Jeremiah. You can also find him in the book of Jeremiah as well. And in Apocrypha, there's Baruch as well. His uh, preaching as well. So Baruch 85. Now, if you have the the, the book, Pseudographia, it's a little bit different. There's two different versions. I have both, but nevertheless, they're still correct. It reads further. Now, let me get that bit bigger for y'all. Further know that our fathers in former times, the former generations, had helpers, okay? Righteous prophets and holy men. But we are also in our country, and they helped us when we sinned. And they intervened for us with him who has created us since they trusted in their works. And the mighty one heard them and purged us from our sins. But now the righteous have been assembled and the prophets are sleeping. Also, we have left our land and Zion has been taken away from us. And we have nothing now apart from the most the mighty one and his law. Therefore, if we direct and dispose our hearts, we shall receive everything in which we lost again by many times. For that which we lost was subject to, to corruption, and that which we will receive will not be corruptible. Amen. We also have written to our brothers in Babylon so that they may attest to them these things also. And these things which I have said earlier should be before your eyes always. So please understand what I'm about to read. This should be what you're thinking about continually. Since we are still in the spirit of power of our liberty. So since we're still have power of liberty, you need to be thinking about what I'm about to read to you. And further, the Most High is also long-suffering to us here and has shown to us that which comes and has not concealed from us what will happen at the end. So he's given us liberty to understand what was going to happen. Therefore, before his judgment exacts his own and truth of that which is due. You hear what he said? Before his judgment before his judgment, before his judgment, let us prepare ourselves that we may possess and not be possessed. Wait, what? <laughs> that we may possess the kingdom and not be possessed. That's exactly what it said. And that we may hope and not be put to shame. And that we may rest with our fathers and not be punished with those who hate us. See, I, I've said that so many times. I, I, I just can't imagine burning with the same people that I told repent. I can't imagine burning with the same people that would crucify Christ if they seen him today. I don't want to be in that. It reads, for the youth of this world has passed away and the power of creation is already exhausted. That means the Most High is tired of creating things. He's tired. And the coming of the times is very near and has passed by. And the pitchers, pitcher is near the well, the ship to the harbor, and the journey to the city, and life to his end. So it's given all kinds of metaphors. The pitcher to the well, the ship is at the harbor, 
it's here. Now, take heed. Once again, further, prepare yourselves so that when ye sail and ascend from the, the ship, you may have rest and not be condemned when you have gone away. So that means when the time comes for you to man up or woman up, you are ready. For behold, the Most High will cause all these things to come now. You better write what I'm about to share. And you know what? That whole rapture doctrine by John Darby, that's a cop out for lazy Christians, for lazy biblical believers. So you don't have to read nothing. You just think you're getting saved. But when I read this to you, tell me how ridiculous those people will look. It says, for behold, the Most High will cause all these things to come. There will not be an opportunity to repent anymore. The Most High is like, I'm sick of it. I heard enough. Um, I am no longer going to be a crutch. You're not going to be sitting there praying to me on your deathbed saying at the age of 60, when you didn't committed the worst of crimes all 59 years, and then at age 60, as you're dying and you have no family around you, or you have a few family, most high is like, forget it. And I've already, I've hit points where people just hated me i said how come every time someone die you think they go to heaven what where is that that's the biggest lie that also makes people believe they shouldn't serve the most high come on now i mean think about it right all these all these christians right talking about Oh, you know, you can pray for forgiveness and God will forgive you. Well, there's certain sins that are unforgivable. Unforgivable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 28 and 9, he who turns his ear away from the law, his prayer is an abomination. So you mean to tell me Mr. Christian pastor, that a pedophile can get the death sentence and then repent before they get a lethal injection and they'll make it to the kingdom? And guess what? I guess no one's going to hell then. I guess hell does not exist. In fact, Christians, those type of Christians, those type of Bible believers, help atheists stay atheists. Because they like, because a lot of these people be trying to think logical, and it's like, but they're not teaching logic, right? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it says there will be not, there will not be an opportunity to repent anymore, nor a limit of times, nor duration of periods, nor a change to rest. And that's supposed to say a chance, chance to rest, nor an opportunity to prayer. Wait, you mean we're going to be running and moving so much that you wouldn't even have the ability to pray? Are you sure you know what's about to occur? Because I said a worldwide purge on people who uphold and believe in the Bible. It says, nor sending up petition. That's ministers, that's pastors. A lot of people don't know. The pastors, people not utilizing their ministers and pastors properly. Because ministers are supposed to tell you that we have the ability to send up petitions. That was given. 
that was given an ability. If you saw my lesson, I was talking about Peter a few lessons ago. That was also given to Peter. That was given to forefathers. That was given to the most righteous. It says, nor giving knowledge. I mean, hey, man. And it's supposed to say getting or getting knowledge. You, you, you ain't gonna have time to Amazon no more and buy them books. You, you ain't gonna have time to listen on YouTube no more. You ain't gonna have time to go to and fro and look at one person's video and the next one. <laughs> I tell people, hey, if you doing that, you might as well just turn it off and go back to whatever you was doing. If you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, he said, don't be lukewarm. You're either on one side or the other. You're either with one or the other. Come on now. They don't want to apply the whole Bible. It says, nor giving love, which means you can forget if you single, you can forget finding a spouse. <laughs> throw that away. If your spouse dies, throw the a hey, throw that away. You can forget it. It's not gonna happen. Nor opportunity of repentance, nor supplicating for offenses, nor prayers of the fathers, nor and intercession of the prophets. Now, this goes deep. I, I, and I'm not even going to talk about it because that's a part of the resurrection of the dead. They keep, they keep, uh, dismant they, they just keep thrashing the resurrection of the dead scriptures and using it for a rapture when it's not for them, it's for the people who are dead. It tells us that in the book of Revelations the souls that begged to be released that were righteous. But no, <laughs> people are in us, there, people in, now let me, the, let me clear it. There's, when people die, they go to a place called Sheol. It's a resting place. You either go to a temporary place called Hades, it's like a, a temporary place until the final judgment. And then there's one called the bosom of Abraham, named directly after Abraham. And that's where all the righteous go. And all the righteous are making prayers for all the brothers and sisters that walk in the truth now. That is written in numerous biblical texts. But why isn't your, your teachers and leaders teaching this? that people who have died are rooting for you and me. Boy, <laughs> Boy I'm talking too much. They better start learning. It says, nor help of the righteous, which means, hey, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this. I know that for those who's been with me for a while, you know, I made a lesson on the wilderness and the fling and all that. Like we went in depth, I mean, for months. We talk about, hey, YouTube don't even get the, 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 the meat of all my lessons. My lessons used to be seven, eight hours long. I mean, we would go all day long. I wouldn't eat. That's how much I was preaching. No break, but a bathroom break. <laughs> That's it. So when it says no help of the righteous, hey, you know, I help you then. And then think about it, right? Brothers and sisters, I tell you this. Remember the people during Noah's time. You don't know what exactly happened. Read the book of Jasher. Okay. When, when that water started getting ankle deep, 
knee deep. And people was like, hey, Noah, we know you're on that boat, man. Like I said, we'll change, man. We'll, we'll follow the most high. So no, just like the, the versions, right? Matthew 25, right? Oh, now, now you want help, right? No, the righteous ain't going to help you. That was law. A lot of people like, oh, you know, oh, you know, don't, don't be cowardly. Fall on what Christ says. You ain't prepared. You stuck like Chuck. That's it. Bottom line. Sorry. Now, like I said, for some, there's some exception for the elderly and the sick, the disabled. Hey, most I got those people because that is our job to help the fatherless, help the widow, help the sick, help the elderly. But so help me. Let's say if I seen a neighbor who I live by and they never had interest in serving the most high, but they knew that I served the most high, they knew that I ministered, they knew and they didn't say nothing before or ask questions. Bye. That's just what it is. Hey, no help of the righteous. Better get it now. That's why I tell people, I have, man, people with me in my little congregation, though, I hate having congregants who don't ask questions. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? You know, the most I gave me a gift to teach you, you're not asking questions? What? Are you serious? I guess you don't really value your life that much, do you? I guess you don't value eternity, do you? There's a proclamation of judgment to corruption regarding the way to fire and the path that leads to the glowing coals. Therefore, there is one law by one, one world and an end for all who exist. Then he will make alive those whom he has found, and he will purge them from sins. And at that time, at the same time, he will destroy those who are polluted with sins. And who's going to do the purging? Christ. Who's going to destroy those polluted with sin? Christ. And how do you get purged? You got to get baptized with what? Fire and the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Right? You got to get baptized. That's a second baptism that many people don't even know. But I went over that in my Forge by Fire. Talking about, oh, I didn't know there was more than one baptism. Oh, you, you, you better what? You better what? Get knowledge while you can. Better hurry up. Because are you going to be satisfied or are you going to regret? First Timothy. First Timothy chapter four. And people act like this wasn't even in the scripture. First Timothy chapter four, verse 13 reads, till I come. Now, yes, this is Paul, but guess what? Paul was speaking as an ambassador of Christ. So this still applies to everyone, even to this day. Till I come, give attendance to reading exhortation and doctrine. What? Should, should, should I read a little bit more? Verse 11, these things command, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in the word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity till I come give it, give 
attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. So make sure you know what talent you have, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. A lot of people don't even know what laying on of hands is. And uh, you can get a gift by someone laying on hands, but never mind. Shh. Won't go too far. And med meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. And take heed unto thyself and unto doctrine and continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay. Ah, uh, man, I'm just talking too much. Just a little bit. I'll move forward. Proverbs, why is this so important? Why is everything I'm talking about so important? Proverbs 22, verse 3 says, A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and pun uh, punish. So the simple people like, nah, you know, you know, uh, Russia going to give oil back to Europe. We're we going to be kicking by the winter. But a wise man's like, <laughs> you see what's happening? You, you really think you're going to get oil in the winter? I mean... One way or another, people are going to die. Either they're going to heat up the hospitals for the children and the sick and the elderly, or they're going to heat up your homes. Which one is it going to be? Right? Oh, boy. Either the politicians are going to heat up their homes, or they're going to heat up yours. Which one is it going to be? Let's see, a wise man foreseeth the evil. You understand what that means? Foreseeth, 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 foreseeth. Say it with me, foreseeth. To see. able to advise self, discern, have experience to understand, take heed, to look on, to perceive, to understand that it be near, to regard, to respect the situation for what it is, it's not getting better to have visions and understand. Many people sit there and say Babylon is not America and all that. Let me tell you something. America is in the way of the new world order. Listen to what I'm telling you. Because America is a beacon of false hope for the world, right? You can come here to Babylon. You can get a home. You can get a job. You could stock up on guns. What other country just let their citizens just purchase guns? I'll wait. <laughs> okay. So uh, America is like a, a resistance country. Like, hey, we're going to do what we want, how we want, when we want. The wise man foresee it. See what's going on? How do you think all those things? that I share with y'all in the videos ain't happening in America. One, America got a different judgment. Two, 
<laughs> Come on now. America got a different judgment, but brothers and sisters overall, if you foresee the evils that's happening, what are you doing with your time? Make sure you 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 understand. What does the saying go? Leave no stone unturned. Make sure you understand. Because hey, if if, if I, I I try and think and I pray. And I try and think, most high, how could I help the people? How could I help as best as I can? I try and put myself in brothers and sisters' shoes. Like, how would I want a minister to help me or assist me? Even if they're across the world. <laughs> as is me. But hey, once again, I said it. On the day of judgment, I said, Christ, I told him to ask questions. Now, uh, you are true. Your word is righteous, it's pure, it's perfect. You saw how many people ask questions. I mean, legitimate questions, questions that would further them and their knowledge. Hey. And I say legitimate questions because I have, as a minister, I have a level of expectation for people. And I always said this, I've had, even when I was, you know, teaching in high schools, I was teaching in, in college, I told people, if your teacher does not have expectations of you. That means they don't value you. Neither do they believe that you are capable of becoming a better person. Because an expectation is just a goal. So that's why people I talk to, I have expectations. Hey. And, and my journey, you know, the expectations have come low. I'm just like, oh, oh most high, help me. <laughs> As a minister, I'm like, man, most high, please, 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 you know, keep this person going strong. And then I'm like, all right, where does this person fit in Mark 4, sow or seed? Which one of these are they? I sowed the seed, but which one of the, what, do, what is their foundation? Oh, most high, please don't let Satan take it away, please. That's how I am in the truth. I'm like, please, most high, please. So that's, that's just real. All in all, when that blackout goes out, I hope that my lessons were able to help you foresee and make righteous moves and prepare yourself so that when the stores like my goal for myself and my home and i hope other brothers and sisters is when the food gets crazy i hope you have enough food in your home so that you don't have to go out into chaos and put yourself in a situation that you may not come back from, right? That's my hope. Proverbs 1, 5 reads, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now, I had to share this. Increase learning. You may ask why I didn't share with you. Time is going to run out. Increase your learning while you can, right? Increase it. Mm. 
decrease it. And it says a wise man will hear. Now, you know, it's dangerous. The Most High doesn't like lukewarm people, to and fro people, scattered here, scattered there, scattered everywhere. Just like, just like when people come to me and say, did you see this video? Or did you see that? I'm like, um, you're telling me this, why? <laughs> One, I'm a minister. Two, before ministry, I didn't do that in the first place. I wasn't given lies or going to and fro. I wasn't given a time of day. That's just a waste of time sit up there looking at one person video and another person and another person listening to another person it's a waste of time but you know how you hearing and listening to the right things is when you increase learning all right ecclesiasticus which is sirach but ecclesiasticus 38 how do you increase learning, brothers and sisters? Do you know? Here, I'll help you. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall become wise. Now, when I first came into the truth years, years, years ago, people used to say, you can't read the Bible, and people still say you do. Now, you can't read the Bible, you know, um, it takes three years to read the Bible. And I'm just looking at these idiots like, who told you this? You are an idiot. It's as simple as that. Because if someone told you, I want you to read a 500 page book for a million dollars and I give you three weeks, you would read it, wouldn't you? I bet you would. Those people are, uh, yeah, as a minister, I can be tough, but those people are idiots. I want to say something else. Just ignorant. They ignorant. <laughs> they ignorant. They ignorant. I, I, I remember when I went to Ethiopia, I told people, oh, yeah, I've already read the entire Bible twice thoroughly. That was years, years ago. Like, I still read the Bible and I keep going and keep going and keep going. Oh, say, so how long you been in the truth? Oh, this time. Oh, that's not three years. At least take three and a half years, three years. Is that what Christ said? Is that what Paul said? Is that what Peter said? What about Enoch? Chaldezek? What about Noah? Jacob, Abraham, nah. Isaac, Joseph, that, 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 that's what they said. Moses, Moses say that. Uh, I don't remember seeing that once in the Bible. Brothers and sisters, if you want to understand, you have to use your free time wisely. And you know what? For some people, free time is dead. It's gone. It's already in the grave. You see all this inflation? That just means you got to work harder, don't it? <laughs> you, you think Satan, knowing that Christ is right on top of him, about to come, you think that Satan was going to give you free time to, to read? <laughs> no, he was going to what? Overload. He was going to make more time that you put into the world. That's why it says what? How, how can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and that glorieth in the gold that driven, driveth oxen and is occupied in their labors and whose talk is of bullocks? So what does this mean? How can you get more knowledge and wisdom if all you're doing is working all day? 
<laughs> right? Uh, what you doing? But this is why in Second Ezra 16, it says what? It says in 45, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain. Yeah, you're doing absolutely for no reason. It's already over. They just stringing it along like I wish they just hurry up already. Spoiler alert. Someone need to tell them they world suck. It sucks. I'm ready to go to a tax free eternity. No time, no aging. Everybody got mansions. I'm ready to go to that. Forget this whole gentrification, division. One people can get this, other people can't get that. This credit score, that, that amount of money. I need this loan and that loan and this and that. Everybody going to be on first class. Everyone got a mansion in the kingdom. Someone tell them, hey, you can inflate the world all you want. This world sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Simple. Going back. It's rock. Ecclesiasticus. 24 says, the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that had little business shall become wise. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and that glorieth in the gold, that driveth oxen and is occupied in their labors, whose talk and whose talk is of bullets? He giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give the kind fodder. So that means your mind is always focused on what you could do next for your job. Imagine, can, can you imagine this, right? And we've all fall victim to this. So this is like a rhetorical question. Can you imagine like living your life, thinking, you know, going to work, paying your bills and being a, per, a good person? Can you imagine that being just the basis of your life, like what you thought was great. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? No, that sucks. That's awful. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. The smith also sitting in by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapor of the fire wasteth his flesh and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work and watch it to polish it perfectly. So doeth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always careful set at his work and maketh all his work by number. He fashioneth the clay with his arm and boweth down his strength before his feet. He applieth himself to lead it over and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trust to their hands and everyone is wise in this work. That means you work hard for what you do. And the only thing you're truly wise at is your job. You're not wise in the gospel. You're not wise in how to read scripture or memorize it. All you know how to do is be a slave to Satan. We've all been there, out of the truth. 
without these cannot a city be be inhabited so most of it's like hey you know you still in order to have your city rolling things got to happen and they shall not dwell where they will nor go up and down they shall not be sought for in public council nor sit in high con high in the congregation they shall not sit on the judge's seat nor understand the sentence of judgment they cannot declare justice or judgment they shall not be found where parables are spoken but they will maintain the state of the world and all their desires is in the work of their craft now the most high said if you one of these individuals you shouldn't even be talking about the bible that's just <laughs> you, you you shouldn't you should be listening about it not talking about it now how many people would this make obsolete from talking about what they don't know right once again this goes back to the order of christ apostles prophets teachers These are the people who are supposed to be what? Declaring justice and judgment. It's a symbol. And I say this, brothers and sisters, I know we all got to work. We all got to do certain things, right? My job is ministry. Praise the most high. Your job is not, obviously. And of course, you got to work. But what I'm saying is, understand that it's the end. Don't exert yourself for the wrong things. Exert yourself for Christ. Push yourself to the limit for the most high. How many of you out there don't even know your true talent? You may, and mind you, doing push-ups, sit-ups, you know, exercising, that is not a talent. Anyone can train for that. Trust me. I know. I have a degree in sports medicine. I know. I've trained people for the military. I've trained D1 athletes. I, I'm, I'm telling you, anyone can change physically. That's a given. So that's not a talent. A talent is something that the Most High has given you that makes you extraordinary, that makes you special, all right? And then unfortunately, people slave at these jobs so much and they're depressed and they go home and this and that, right? And, and I've seen something, right? And I feel I feel bad for a lot of the women who fell victim to the ways of this world because apparently now there's things on social media where a lot of the women are doing confessions, the older women, and says, oh, we lived our life and had a good time. And now they realize they're lonely. And, you know, there's some men out there who's like that too, right? But you see, for me, I would have thought, well, if i do all of this stuff and i don't have a family who's going to bury me when i'm dead who's going to care for me when i'm sick <laughs> it, it's like people weren't thinking at all they weren't thinking at all it is sad it, it, it truly is sad there's really nothing else to say about it unfortunately ecclesiastes old testament five six through seven Reads, suffer not. Well, 
Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. This is wrong. Apologize. It's eight. I apologize. Happy I caught it. See? Just like I caught my scripture, brothers and sisters, you got to be able to catch it just like that when when the time comes. That's how, that's how well you're going to have to understand these scriptures, right? Being able to correct yourself and say, whoa, whoa, wait, hold on, hold on. Anyway, please ask these eight, five and six. I'll read in seven too. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of a man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? So, brothers and sisters, a wise man knows that we cannot control time. You don't know what tomorrow lies. You don't know. You know that these prophecies is moving fast. But you and I don't control time. We may plan to do something and never get to do it. We don't control time. So a wise man discerns what they see, the time, prophecy, the judgment, the purpose for it. And think about this, right? Discern yourself. Don't always discern the times. Don't always discern what you see on the outside. Discern internally yourself. So I'll give you an example. If I use this equation, a wise man discerneth time, and for that time there's a purpose and judgment. Okay? So if you're looking at the times now on the external, we see that prophecy is happening. What's the judgment? The judgment is that some people are getting evicted. Some people are losing their bank accounts. And what's the purpose for it? The purpose is to inch Christ's return a bit closer. And also the purpose is to let them know what? that they need to repent. Now, internally, you ask yourself, wise man discernible time and judgment and the purpose. How much time do you have to get yourself together? Why did you come up with that judgment or that decision? And your purpose, what's your purpose going to be? How do you propose to change it? How do you propose to make things better? What is your purpose? Well, you have a little bit of time. What is your focus in the little bit of time that we have left before these blackouts occur? Because you, you, ain't, you ain't ready for me to get into it, but I'm going to get into it another time. When those blackouts come, that's going to be the electric blackouts. We ain't talking about the sun yet. And those electrical blackouts, they're going to let everyone purge each other. Order out of chaos. They're going to let everyone purge each other for a time. And when, it, when everything goes to their reset and how they want it to be, you'll be in a different location. But, hey, 
just make sure you're using your time and you discern it. Discern, brothers and sisters, is what that people fall victim to the lack of discernment. I know discernment is scary. Discernment holds us accountable. If you say, man, man, look at the times. I really don't got much time. Ecclesiasticus 21 and 15 reads, if a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. Now, I shared this because obviously you want the word, and I'm happy to share it with you. I'm happy to make you wiser in these perilous times. I'm happy. So you, as an individual being skillful, you are hearing. And then you add on to it with doing good works. Now, I want you to understand, when you see an individual that you talk to, family, friends, coworkers, whomever, and you're trying to tell them the truth, and they just brush it off you, stop helping them. That's the biggest thing that we all do when we come into this truth. We want everyone we know to come with us. And Christ says, many are called, few are chosen. Blessed are your eyes that see and your ears that hear. This was not meant for everyone. And you'll end up having people betray you if you keep pushing the point. Say it once, say it twice. Bible tells us, tell a heretic twice and cut it off. Heretic is someone who chooses their opinion over the most high. Ecclesiasticus chapter three, just spacing that. Verse 29 reads, the heart of the prudent shall understand a parable and an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. Now you see, attentive now everyone in my congregation my my in-person congregation though i'm like uh uh uh, uh I, I, I wish you know they I, I would let them share but you know that's not the platform for that but they would say I'm like the most stern minister. Like, I'm stern. Like, I take it seriously trying to get people to heaven. Like, I'm not about to be laughing and goofing what you like. I'm going to take this seriously. If I could, I would beat it into people. I would. <laughs> my, 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 my congregants now. If I could, I would. That's just the reality. Hey, if I could, if I could beat it into a sodomite or something, I would. <laughs> I would. That's what it took to get them into heaven, but it's not obviously. But I'm saying I'm stern. And being attentive, that is the desire. Being, being eager. Isn't that one of the beatitudes that Christ said? Let's go to it. Matthew chapter five, attentive. So I'm going to take this word attentive, right? Put it in the dictionary, right? 
observant, regarding with care. Christ said it in Matthew 5. What do you say? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I, as a minister, don't want no one around me who ain't hungry. I want to see and know that your appetite, you got some of the word and you just want more. You like me. You know what? I know the most high is against glutton, but I need five and six and seven plates. I need five and six and seven plates of this word. I'm hungry. It's too late in the game. We fourth and inches. We got three seconds left to go. No timeouts. I'm hungry. I want this more than that. That's the type of minister I am. That's the type of congregants I want. Like, you want this. I, I just don't want to hear people say, oh, yeah, I want to meet my maker. I want to get to the kingdom. Like, I want to hear it in people's voice and their actions. Just like for those who are a part of my congregation in person or those who would like to be, like, consistently or permanently a part of my congregation, I have them fill out getting to know you but in a biblical way <laughs> and it's a little it's a little questionnaire let me get to know people biblically and how they view certain things biblically it's like no other congregation that you've seen no because like i said i'm looking for the hungry I'm looking for the thirsty. I'm looking for those who said, well, fill me up, Christ. I'll bring all the all the buckets. That's what I want. I want to be around riders. I want to be around the Peters. All right. So be attentive. To be attentive is to become wise man, observant, regarding, always regarding, attentive to ear and eye, always paying attention, application of the mind. You're always applying the Bible. You're always applying your fear to the most high so that you are regurgitating scriptures in life, that's attentive. Isaiah chapter five and 21 reads, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sights. Now, this is sad. Because like I said, social media and pride has got a lot of people puffed up in knowledge. Like if someone said, hey, you know, mister, can you check this out? Go oh, check it out. If I didn't know the answer, I'm not gonna sit there and say I don't I know something when I don't. I'm not gonna teach something I don't know either. As I said before, I pray and fast for lessons. Most high, you know, what 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 I share with the people, what what's gonna, you know, get the people off their feet and, and pay more attention to you. What's gonna make them think more, work at home on their own on their own? That's what I do. My 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 lessons. <laughs> Boy, my lessons, like I said, used to go seven, eight hours long. 
almost nine hours long, all day long, simply for the fact that brothers and sisters could get every ounce of scripture, every crack and crevice of misunderstanding was answered. You know, when you have good ministry, good teachers, you don't have to be wise in your own eyes, right? You can be informed because the people who like to be wise in their own eyes, then they become teachers. When the Most High said, I never told you to speak. And then you bring a judgment upon yourself because that's not your place. See that? lies in their own eyes and there's a lot of people they're not reading they're not putting in the work so i would say what stay away stay far away stay far away from these individuals brothers and sisters because one thing will lead to another. It will go from their wise in their own eyes with their own knowledge. And then you could be around them and they'll be wise in their own eyes for their own actions and put your life in jeopardy. So just avoid the entire situation and stay away from people who don't resort to Christ as the answer in the Bible. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 32. My son, and this also means my children, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught, and if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. So please understand that ministers, we do not teach just for you to hear something from the Bible. We teach so that you can apply it and become wise throughout your life. That's why we teach these things. I wanted to teach you about CERN and teach you about how the spirits would keep going. On my next CERN lesson, whenever that is, I'm going to show you that Egypt had a parade and a festival for Satan welcoming, welcoming him from the pyramids. You see, I teach you so that you can apply wisdom and understand that the times of spirits roaming, seducing spirits are prevalent in these times. They're rampant, they're not stopping, it's just waxing worse and worse and worse. You think I wanna sit there and teach about spirits, portals and different things? Nope. In a good world, we wouldn't have to teach this, right? But this is not a good world. The good world is a new earth and a new heaven. That's the, where, where everything is eternal and in peace, safety, righteousness and love, joy all around. So brothers and sisters, until we get that, to that point, make sure that when you're being taught, apply these things apply these things. And <laughs> I always like to tell people, maybe ministers are different, that's true. Some good, some bad. Some righteous, some unrighteous, obviously, wolves in sheep's clothing, and some who 
carry their cross and follow Christ. For those of us who carry our cross and follow Christ, our teaching comes with what? The problem and the solution. You want to know how a wolf teaches? They teach just the problem. You know, there's pastors who talk about things like, you know, Kevin Samuels and Nick Cannon and different people and, and celebrity news, Kanye West. And so, well, yes, that is a problem, but how does that equate to a solution to the congregant's life? It doesn't. Like you knowing about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West and who got the new contract and the movie that came out, unless it's prevalent to the truth and can help people understand more, why is it even being discussed in churches, right? You see, like I said, shepherds provide the problem and they show the solution. That's what Christ did. He, he, he came to him with a problem. He even solved problems. He discerned problems. And he always gave a solution. All right. Proverbs 18. Verse 15. Reads. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Getting knowledge is important. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. You know why? Because it told us, don't be just hearers, but doers. So the first step of being a doer is a hearer, which means you must hear knowledge, right? You must hear how to operate, and then you can apply it. That's why the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. Knowledge is important, brothers and sisters. Very. And it says in Proverbs 24 and 5, a wise man is strong. You may think, well, muscles, good core, nice legs. No. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. So knowledge is what increases strength. We're not talking about physical strength. We're talking about mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength. That's what we're talking about. Because First Timothy 4 said what? bodily exercise profited little. Hey, I'm not saying not to, you know, know how to use your body, but hey, what's in the Bible is going to affect your life a lot more. And it's going to make your life more meaningful than going and exercising. Yes, exercising is key, that's true. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Like I said, I have a degree in sports medicine. You, you, you should do something, but exercising is not gonna get you to the kingdom. That's what I'm trying to say, all right? Exercise your brain. Exercise those fruits of the spirit. Exercise your talent to bring another brother or sister in Christ, to Christ. Exercise your talents to give people hope and, sh and be the light. He said, shine your light, right? The world is darkness. That means what? We're all supposed to be a light to someone's darkness. And either we're going to expose sin or we're going to expose the path and show people the way. That's what light does. 
it reveals things and it shows the path. So a man of knowledge is always going to increase strength and help others increase their strength as well. Proverbs 13, verse 16 reads, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Folly is foolishness. See? The wise only deal with knowledge, and I can show you that. I had to put this one in here, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things and hold that fast, which is good. See, the prudent, the wise seek to prove all things. And if it can't be proven through the Most High, then we put it away. But if it can, then we hold on to that which is good. Brothers and sisters, this goes oh, twofold as well, not just with knowledge, but with people as well. Prove all things. You feeling shaky about someone? You feeling uncertain? Prove them. Try the spirit. And then whatever the outcome is, you hold yourself accountable and execute. Hold fast, which is good, or dispose of the bad. Ecclesiasticus 21. Verse 20 through 21 reads, A fool lifteth up his voice with laughter, but a wise man do scarce smile a little. Learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his right arm. Now, I think this is a, a scripture that my, <laughs> that my congregants would say, Mr. Shah, you know, sometimes you can be funny, but hey, a lot of times you not smile. Even when I'm in public, people say, why do you, why do you smile? Even when I was teaching in, uh, in uh, 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 high schools and in the colleges, they said, why you don't smile? I said, what's the smile about? They said, I mean, you got a job, you're living good, you know. I said, what's the smile about? I didn't get to heaven yet, <laughs> right? I didn't get to my goal yet. Right? What? Because I did a few things in life, hit a few milestones. I'm supposed to smile. No, I give glory to the most high. But I'll smile when I get to the kingdom. Because that will be the first real smile besides having my children. <laughs> right? But even that, that's us parents, that grieves us as well, right? Having children in these times. Oof. So I smile. I will smile when I get to the kingdom and when I get others there as well. It says, learning is unto a wise man as an ornament. Now, please understand learning is gold learning is gold it is precious so when you go and you walk past a jewelry store jewelry store and you see all those beautiful gems and diamonds i want you to think of the bible I want you to think of what if you had that, but in the Bible. And guess what? You do. Because those pages in the Bible are worth, are worth way more than those jewels. 
because those jewels can't save your life. Those jewels don't offer you a promise for your faithfulness. Those jewels don't see you for who you are. Don't see you for better. Those jewels didn't send you a comforter. Those jewels didn't send you a savior. Those jewels doesn't give you assurance that you have a father that loves you. So remember, brothers and sisters, the world is going to perish. Make sure you treat learning and reading the Bible as if you're reading gold. Because remember, he does want us to be just like gold. In Isaiah 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Now, you're going to see me read this again, brothers and sisters, in another slide. But I want you to think of it this way, all right? Because there's so much knowledge out there. And sometimes people get confused. You know, Satan tries to pull you in to tempt you. Ask yourself before you watch videos on YouTube or social media, whatever the case is, or even reading books. Is the knowledge that I am allowing my ears to listen to and my eyes to receive, is it from the tree of knowledge of good and evil or is it from the tree of life is it going to send me on the broad path and give me various answers or is it going to be direct and keep me on the narrow is the knowledge that I am allowing myself to embrace. Will it help me live another day and be stable in these times of uncertainty and world wide evils but that being said brothers and sisters i pray that you all learn and really evaluate yourself while the time is short don't let your time spent be a regret don't let your time spent be a regret. Because either way, brothers and sisters, Ecclesiastes is 4 and 20. The Bible tells us, observe the opportunity. And beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. So the shame that bringeth sin is regretting the time and how you spent it. Or the shame to the world which you were reading and studying to show thyself approved and giving attendance to everything that Christ said. And to the world it looks a shame, but unto the Most High, you are showing glory 
and he is giving grace. Stay strong. Keep reading, keep studying while you can. Don't give up. You already observe the opportunity. You observe the times. We're in evil times. This is about your soul. This is about our eternal souls. Let's use our time wisely. Let us not spend eternity regretting what we've done with our time but rather let's spend eternity being satisfied with the sacrifices we made. I love you all. Shalom.